Hey, so random thoughts from my bathtub. <laughs> I swear, I don't know if it's just like the water or like that's a time where I'm naked and vulnerable or what it is. But usually in the shower, in the bathtub this morning um, is kind of where God puts a message on my heart. And so I just, I've been feeling very convicted in this lately. Um, you know, usually when you have an idea of something that you want to do, so like a fitness program, um, a business, starting a business, um, maybe taking a chance on a relationship or a new job, um, or going back to school. Um, when you start to feel that pull to something, to your purpose, when you really start to, um, get excited about something or you know you just you know that there's more for your life and so you kind of like map out this plan and you start to go for it and things just like are so exciting at first um and then reality sits in and you realize that it's going to require a lot more work than you thought it's going to require patience perseverance it's going to require getting up earlier it's going to require um, stepping out in faith, being courage, courageous, you know, a lot of times it's learning to be vulnerable. And I see this happen all the time with coaches that join our team. Um, they start, they're so excited. They're like two weeks in and they freak out and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so much more than I thought it was going to be. And they second guess themselves and the devil like is like, who do you think you are? Why do you think that you are gonna do this. Like, so few people actually build a successful business. Like, why do you think you're so special? Um, you start a fitness program and you're like so into it for like the first two weeks or even 30 days and then all of a sudden like you have a setback or you get injured or you gain a pound and the devil's like, oh, you're so fat, you're so stupid, you've spent all this money, you've wasted all this money, why do you think now it's gonna be any different? You go into a relationship with someone and you're like, this is amazing. And it's all butterflies and freaking rainbows at first. And then they like, I don't know, fart in their sleep or slurp their coffee or whatever the thing is. And you're like, oh my gosh, this person. Like, do I really like them that much that I can listen to them snore and slurp the coffee for the rest of their lives? Like Daryl doesn't slurp his coffee. Um, I'm just using that as an example. Um, so like... We're human, right? Like we are born in flesh. And this is why scripture tells us, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ because God doesn't fill us with those thoughts in our head. You know, that's our own, that's our own humanity, like psyching us out. Most of the time when you have those feelings, either it's because you've said something like that out loud over time, or maybe someone shamed you uh, when you were a kid or called you fat or a parent, you know, didn't believe in your dreams or a spouse didn't believe in your dreams or somebody was, you know, whatever the case may be. Usually that comes from somewhere in your past where someone has made you feel less than. They've shamed you in some kind of way. Um, and so what we really have to be careful of when it comes to those situations is the things that we actually allow to come out of our mouth. So when you think something like that's why scripture tells us take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ because in that moment where negativity, doubt, fear, all of these things start to come into your mind, some of that is evil. Some of that like evil exists in the world. Can we all just like looking around at the world? We know that that is the case. Like people are not evil, but there is evil in the world. And when you say these things out loud, that's when it comes in to your life. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit there reminding you like, hey, we're living free in Christ. Like you don't have to fill your life with all of these things that the world tells you to. Like then it just spews out everywhere. Evil just spews out everywhere. And so if you are, if you know God or you have Jesus in your heart, or maybe you've thought about having asking Jesus in your heart or whatever, something that is very crucial for you to know is that you're not going to get rid of the negative things in your head. Like we all have those things where if we said them out loud, the things that we actually think, like people would be like, whoa, 
like they totally judge you, right? But you know, everybody has those thoughts. Like you hold a brand new baby and you're like, oh my gosh, please don't drop this baby on its head. Or like I've driven, we've driven over the bridge in the golf cart. And I was like, what if I threw my dog off the golf cart right now? That's not something I ever would do. I love my dog. She's sleeping right here. She's so cute and snuggly. I can't believe I actually even said that out loud, but it's weird things like that, <laughs> you know? Someone's probably gonna shame me for that later. Um, that you would never think out loud or say out loud or nothing that you would ever do. But like, those are just things that happen in our head because we're fleshy, fallen short sinners, right? So in those moments, I have to say, Lord, I don't know where that came from, but can you get that thought out of my head? Or Lord, you know that this is like, I don't know what's going on in my brain right now, but can you just wipe that thought away? Wipe that feeling away. Um, and so when you're on a healthy eating plan, for example, or you're, you know, considering a new relationship or considering taking a new job or considering, um, you know, building a business, things are going to come at you. The devil doesn't want you to live in purpose. He doesn't want you to have faith. He doesn't want you to go out and live the big, scary dreams for your life because he's afraid that eventually you're going to realize that was a blessing from God. And then maybe your belief is going to increase a little bit more and good things are going to continue to happen. And you may be like, oh my gosh, maybe there is a God after all. Um, and if you are a believer, like it's especially hard because you, you know, like for me, I know where God has called me to in my business. I know where he's called me to. I know that Beachbody is the platform that I can use to help women. Fitness is not my thing. I mean, I love exercise when it's over. Like, that's just the case. My my business, like my job is to encourage women to, you know, push play on a workout and eat healthy because that's that's where goodness and health and strength comes from. But my business is founded on this and this and this, connecting all of those things so that when we start here, it filters down into here. And then we want to do the things that are good for us in this body. And then we provide, I can provide the tools for these ladies to do those things. Um, and so this morning I was reading in my personal development book. If you guys don't read any kind of faith-based personal development, I highly recommend it. If you don't want to spend money on books, um, get yourself one of these. It's called The Bible. Um, it will literally help you overcome, learn, do anything in your life that it will. It's like literally your daily guidebook. But I love to read books by women in business, women who love God the way I do and who can, you know, encourage you and who've been there and they can help you push through these things. And so this morning she was talking about fear and she was talking about pushing past your fear and the lie that you're not good enough. And the truth is you don't have to be the best to add value to someone's life. The lie is you're not ready. Truth is there's no such thing as ready. I hear from women all the time. They're like, can you follow up with me in two months? So I follow up with them in two months and they're like, I'm just not ready. Okay. Well, welcome to the club. Who's ever ready. I'm not ready. That's why I have my go-go juice. That's what makes me ready. <laughs> That's why I praise because then he makes me ready. Um, we have this, like, she calls it imposter syndrome, like where we have this idea that we're not good enough, that someone else is more qualified, but God doesn't call those who are qualified. He calls those who are called. He has purpose for everyone. I can tell you it's not to live overweight. I can tell you it's not to rely on food or alcohol or sex or social media or pills, or all any of those things for comfort. It's not, that's not what you're meant to live for. And the closer you become to God, the, the second you take on a healthy lifestyle, a healthy program, you start a new business, or you, you know, take a chance on that relationship, even with the most God-loving person, things are going to come at you that the devil is going to make you question those things. Or maybe it's just that, you know, shame and doubt and fear that someone put in your head a long time ago. Maybe it's the shame and doubt and fear that you continue to put in your head by saying, I'm not worthy. I'll never lose the weight. I'll never get healthy. I'll always be financially stuck. We've got to change that conversation. Scripture tells us, take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Our pastor said that in his message three weeks ago, 
And when I start to get in those negative head spaces, I am saying in my head, take that thought obedient and make it, or take that thought captive and make it obedient to Christ, obedient to Christ, obedient to Christ. That's all you have to say. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Your husband's going to drive you nuts. You live with a man. He's going to drive you nuts. Take every thought captive, make it obedient to Christ. You want to have sex outside of marriage? Take every thought captive, Lindy, and make it obedient to Christ. You want to eat food that isn't fueling you on your healthy journey. Like if you're, if you have healthy goals, like just stop eating sugar. Like you're either going to decide to like put your excuses down and do it or you're not. And the things sometimes in your head are like, oh, well, I've done amazing this week. So I'm just going to have a treat. Okay. But we know that sugar is 10 times more addictive than heroin. So the second you have that one treat, your body, if you've gone without it, for any amount of time is like, <gasps> like it just wants all the sugar. Like one treat is just never enough, is it? Like your body physically reacts to sugar because it is fake and not healthy and it wants to draw you into the next sugary thing that is going to then push you away from your goals. And then either that thing that's in your head or that shame from the past or that evil trying to bust through your brain right now is going to say, oh, you can just start again tomorrow. Well, yeah, mercies, mercies are new every day. You can start every day or you can start in the next right choice. Pastor Ben always says, do the next right thing. Do the next right thing, not tomorrow's right thing. Do the next right thing. If you mess up at 1259, at 12 o'clock, you make a healthier choice. Do you do the next right thing? One of our girls in our group last couple weeks ago, she's like, I'm going to stop drinking pop tomorrow. I said, stop right now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Stop right now. She's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, stop right now. If you're dating someone, just understand that they're not going to be exactly who you think that they should be or do all of the things that you think they should do. And that works for you as it pertains to them. Like, you have to find someone that you love enough to love them through your struggles. You have to find the job that you're going to love enough, the passion and purpose that you're going to love enough to want to show up every day when it gets hard. Building a business is hard. I know that I've been a coach over five years and I know that in the beginning of my business, I had all of these big fleshy worldly goals that I wanted to achieve. So when I started reading faith-based personal development and I still had income goals, right? You got to earn a living. I still have um, goals for my physical self. Um, I have all of these goals. Then the devil comes in and he's like, well, you're being greedy. I want to earn a million dollars a year. I told Daryl, I want to earn a million dollars a year and live our life doing 80-20 giving. How freaking cool would that be? I want to bless the shit out of the people that have blessed me. And trust me, I've been blessed by many. Like, I just want to like make a million dollars a year and give it all away. Wouldn't that be so cool to just like anonymously donate to like places all over the world and like they have no idea where it's coming from and you just get to like do cool things for them? Because if we don't do it as Christians, living in purpose, fighting for the dream that God's placed in our heart, who's going to do it? You have an obligation as a Christian to take care of the widows and orphans because that's what scripture tells us to do. You can't do that living paycheck to paycheck. You can't do that living unhealthy. You can't wake up every day early and work towards your goals so in the afternoon you can go love and live and serve other people. You can't do that when you're unhealthy, when you're living in an obese body. We are in a pandemic of obesity because people don't want to move their bodies or fuel their bodies. People tell me all the time, I can't afford your program, but you know how much money people spend going through the drive-thru to feed their family at McDonald's? It's like 50 to $60 now to feed your family in the drive-thru. Do that two times, you can pay for my program. For like literally a lifetime of health. Like... We have to come to the point where the nonsense that we've put up here, we got to break it down. We got to dig up the roots and see what's real and see what's a lie. See what's truth and see what's false. And the second that you decide that you're going to do something better for your life, you have to be prepared. You have to put on the armor of God and say, hey, listen, I rebuke all of the evil bullshit in Jesus name because I am not that person anymore. Who I was yesterday is not who I am today.
who you were yesterday, who you were five minutes ago. It does not have to be who you are right now. The only person, the only person that you need to live up to in this life is Jesus. That's the only, that's the only entity above you that should be determining every choice you make. Daryl always says, I want to live pleasing to you and to God. And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> you live pleasing to God. Every decision you make for our family will be pleasing to me. You start living that way. I start living that way. If we all start living that way, things are going to get better. Our kids are going to see a different way to have a relationship. Our kids are going to crave that kind of intimate relationship with their heavenly father because they see what that does in your family. And our kids need those kind of relationships. They need those kind of examples because they're out here getting, you know, gay pride shoved in their face. They're getting, you know, furries at school going to bathrooms and litter boxes shoved in their face. They are seeing things that kids are they are not supposed to see our kid like when i was a kid we didn't have to make those kind of decisions the only thing that i had to make a decision for as a kid was am i going to make a mud pie and smear it all over my face or am i going to smear it all over my cousin's face am i going to ride my bike today or get on my rollerblades like those were the hardcore decisions that i had to make not am i going to identify as an animal and pee in a litter box. This starts at home. This starts by taking every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Not to judge people who are going through those situations, but to love them, to show them a better way. That we were created wholly, lovingly in the image of Christ at conception. We have to love our friends and our family. We have to pray over them. We have to pray for healing in Jesus' name to to like literally like fix the shit that's going on in our world. And people say to me all the time, oh, I'm just going to pray about it. I'm sorry. You wait till you get to heaven. And Jesus says, I'm sorry. Did you shame someone for saying they were going to pray over something? Because prayer is the only thing that is going to change this world. It ain't no revolution. It ain't no snarky comments on social media. It ain't no this. It ain't no that. The only thing that you can do today right now is pray for our government, is pray for our men and women who are they're fighting for the freedoms that so many of us take for granted. The only thing we can do is to pray for the missionaries that they're provided for, funded, and that they stay healthy and strong so they can go out in other countries and deliver the message and mission of Christ. My cousins right now are on a, on a flight to Morocco where Christians are not welcome. They're on a flight to Morocco right now to live, to go out and live obedient to Christ. How cool is that? Who's going to take care of them? We have to do that. That is our job. This world is broken. And the only thing that's going to fix it is Jesus and us praying. And we can't do that when we're unhealthy in here and we're unhealthy in here. It's never going to work. There's a better way. I pray for the addiction cycles to be broken in my family every day. I pray for... Radical healing when I walk past my neighbor's house who I've known my whole life who has a brain tumor. I pray healing over her house. I hold out my hand. I pray healing over her house when I walk by. Don't tell me that shit doesn't work. A couple months ago at church, our um, worship leader, his dad, full of blood clots up and down his legs. He was going in for surgery. Family prayed over him two weekends before they went in for surgery. There wasn't one blood clot. That's not medication. That's not treatment. There was no medication or treatment. That is healing only done in that case by the prayer of an 11 year old grandson. Don't doubt that your prayer is not being heard. Say them out loud. Say them in your head. Just say them. Pray over our government. That they're going to have the conviction in their heart to do the things that God calls them to do. 
not the evil of this world because there is evil in our government. There is evil in the world right now. There is evil out there going and grooming our kids to tell them that it's okay for them to wear tails and ears and go to school and pee in a litter box. This is not okay. Weird shit has been happening since the beginning of time. You get in the book of Genesis and you will see that it has been happening since the beginning of time. Scripture tells us there is nothing new under the sun. I mean, kids peeing in litter boxes in school is pretty freaking weird. But there is nothing new under the sun. And it is our moral and ethical obligation to pray over those kids for that cycle of brokenness to be ripped away. Because that is only evil in their life. That is only evil. And that doesn't just happen to a kid. That is put in their mind by something else. And that is where we have to find this cycle and stop it. And that is done through prayer and fasting. If you don't pray for our country, if you don't fast for our country... We got to do better. We've got to do better. There is a better way. There is a better way. We don't shame people. We don't judge them. Sin is a sin is a sin. There is no scale of one to 10. You judge someone for something that you don't believe in or doesn't align with scripture, drunkenness, homosexuality, having an affair, stealing, murder, all of those things, your judgment of that person is no different than the sin that they carry. That's real hard to think of in a world like we live in today. None of us are good at it. None of us are perfect at it. Don't say that you are. We all fall short of God's glory every day. And that's okay. That's where grace comes in. But we can love those people and pray over them. Love yourself. Pray over yourself. Pray for healing for yourself. God, take this from me. Whatever it is, anxiety, depression, wipe it away. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who isn't weary and burdened? I know I am. And I give him my junk all day, every day. I can't imagine someone who isn't a believer, who doesn't have that peace knowing that he's going to fix it and take it. He's already taken it today. When you start letting the shame and the fear and the doubt keep you from living God's best for your life, you're never going to get out and live the full potential of what he has designed for you. Don't do that. Don't do that. You deserve to live in a healthy, flexible, whole body. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Stop asking yourself, what your husband needs, what your kids need. Stop asking yourself how you can do more, do more, do more. Ask yourself what God needs from you. Because when you make that the priority of your day, Father, show me your will for my day. And you start to say that prayer every day. And he starts to trickle it into you every day. And you start to live that way every day. The blessings are going to come abundantly. You're going to get the rest. All of your, you know, kids and your spouse and your coworkers are going to get from you what you need. Stop trying to do it all on your own. Stop. Stop, stop, stop right now. This world is full of addiction and alcoholism. It is full of hatred and anger and resentment and it's not how we're supposed to live and Jesus doesn't care about religion Pharisees were religious people Jesus was not a Pharisee Jesus came here to love people where they were in the mess where they were Peter denied him three times he was sent to the cross Judas betrayed him Peter went out 
after Christ was re resurrected into heaven and was a huge part of the church and why the church was built today. Saul was literally persecuting and murdering Christians. He was saved, delivered. And from then on, he became one of the biggest apostles for the faith and freedom that we get to understand and live in today. Everyone in the Bible who made any significant kind of change was a hot mess shit show, just like me and you. Find comfort in that. Find peace in that. Find joy in that. Do you understand how, how vital that is to get into this word and understand his plan for your life? Do you? Do you really? Maybe you've read the Bible. I don't care. Atheists read the Bible. Atheists understand the Bible. Non-believers read the Bible. People are out there misinterpreting the Bible. They're manipulating it to fit into whatever nonsensical bullshit they're trying to push on you. I don't care if you start reading the Bible and you find two verses and it takes you two years to read and understand everything God wants you to take from those two verses. Don't just read it to read it. When Daryl and I read, we read a couple of verses in the morning and say, okay, Lord, how are we going to apply this to our lives and what do you want us to learn? It doesn't have to be all in a hurry. The second you decide that you're going to live better, eat healthier, study the Bible more, build a business, have that relationship, it takes time. God is going to break you down. You're going to go in. You're going to be so excited. And then it's all going to crumble. And it's going to be, he's going to break it down. Because probably somewhere along the way, you got off course. You went your path instead of his path. It happens to me about twice a week. <laughs> Even the strongest of believers fall and smack their face every day. And anyone who tells you they don't. Well, they need to humble pie themselves. Christianity isn't about being perfect. It's about understanding that God was the only perfect one. And that his death and resurrection on the cross took away all of the junk. It took away all of the mess. He paid the price with his blood. In the Old Testament, the old promise, it was the blood of the lamb. In the New Testament, the new promise Christ was the blood of the lamb. His blood sacrifice wiped off all of our crap. There's nothing you can do to earn it. You don't deserve it. He's just going to give it to you because he loves you to death. Literally. So don't take that for granted. Yeah, he gives it to you. Yeah, you got it. So what? You're going to go out and get drunk tomorrow? You're going to go out and sleep around tomorrow. You're going to go out and shame people on social media tomorrow. You're going to go out and starve yourself tomorrow. Don't do that. His mercies are new every day, but that doesn't mean that your his grace continues. I mean, it does continue to cover your sin, but that's just living in this whole other cycle of sin that you don't want to get into. Repent from the feelings of inadequacy, of shame, of all of the things that you struggle with in this life. Ask him to lead your path, to guide your path, and let him give you the things that you need every day. Lord, give me what I need. Not what I want, what I think I need, but what I actually need. Give, give, me this day, give us this day our daily bread, what we need today, our daily bread. What do I need today, Lord? Give me that. And find peace in the freedom that some days is going to be nothing. You don't have to do anything. Just don't stop living in purpose. Don't stop fighting for your purpose. Don't stop praying over your purpose. Whatever the thing is you feel called to do, do it painfully until you're living on the other side of the freedom and the joy, knowing that you've reached the goal that he wanted you to.
You're going to want to quit. You're going to want to give up, but don't. Take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ, and he's going to provide for you every step of the way.